Thanks for tuning in. In this video, I want to share a project that I've been working on for the past few weeks, really just trying to uh, simplify the process of creating a wireless Mavlink bridge. And in this case, the script that I've created, I'm calling it the RAD Mavlink Bridge. It will be available in GitHub. You can access it. I'm going to demonstrate how it works and then show you how we actually do the setup. Now, this is nothing new. There are several tutorials that show how to create a Wi-Fi hotspot with Raspberry Pi, but it took me a while to figure this out, so I decided to simplify it into a single script that you download, run. It installs all the necessary modules as well as map proxy, so the communication will be happening between your aircraft and Pi. But running on Pi, we have map proxy. I might update this later to run Mavlink router. And what that does is with map proxy and a wireless hotspot, we can connect from any ground station, let's say the iPad to Raspberry Pi. I've also done this with my desktop and it really just simplifies the connection process. As you know, if you've watched any previous videos, I actually had an on the go cable connected to an Android device. You had to lug this around. So we get power to the Pi, we connect via Wi-Fi, and then that information is proxied from Raspberry Pi to any ground station. And before I do the demonstration, I will be updating the script in the near future to use the UART header pins on Raspberry Pi so that we can have a companion computer. This would be on board the aircraft using UART communication, which would allow us to do some onboard processing. But for now, the script is just going to demonstrate how to keep this on the ground and have a wireless bridge. Let me go ahead and power up. As part of the script, we'll install map proxy and then a little daemon process to auto start everything. So once you plug everything in, you should be ready to go. Now let me go ahead and power on the QAV500. This is an old build. I won't really actually be flying it. We'll just demonstrate how to get telemetry onto the iPad. Now we'll make the connection. This could be with iPad, your Android device, uh, your PC, your Mac, anything that runs Q Ground Control. The first thing what we'll do is we'll go to settings. We'll look for our Wi-Fi connections. This will broadcast a network called RAD Bridge. As we get into the script later, you'll see where in the configuration that you can change the SSID or the actual password to connect. So I'm selecting RAD Bridge. I'm just going to use the default password of testing one, two, three. What happens now is that Raspberry Pi has assigned an IP address to the RAD bridge. We'll go over to Q Ground Control. We look at the settings, we'll look at comm links. And I have this bridge already set up, but let me just go ahead and demonstrate. Anytime that a device connects to this hotspot, it's going to be given an IP but the actual host IP of Pi will always be 192.168.4.1. That is also something that you can configure, but from a lot of the tutorials, that's the default IP address. So I went ahead and just left that alone. So I'll hit OK, then we'll hit Connect. So what we have now is communication between iPad and Pi. The telemetry radios are sending information. Map proxy is then sending that to a port. Now Q ground control is set up. Let me just change the flight mode to demonstrate. Echo flight mode. We can also go in here and look at parameters. Let me demonstrate quickly with my iPhone. We'll connect to Rad Bridge. We'll do testing one, two, three. And then I'll go over to Q ground control. We'll set up our comm links. I'll add a new one. We'll just leave that unnamed for now. And we want to specify UDP. We'll leave the default port of 14550. That's where the script is actually forwarding Mavlink packets. Then we'll hit add for our target host. Since we're connected to the Pi, once again, it's 192.168.4.1. Hit OK. Okay, we'll select it and we'll hit connect.
And so now the parameters are being downloaded. Our RAD Mavlink bridge is sending information via map proxy. We'll go ahead and change to uh, stabilize mode. And look at our different parameters. Okay, so enough of that. Let's actually talk about how we do the install. What I'll do is leave this Raspberry Pi 3. This is the Model B Plus alone. Now, the script currently assumes that you have Wi-Fi built in. So we know it works with the Raspberry Pi 3 with built-in Wi-Fi. And we're going to do another installation with this Raspberry Pi 4. This also has built-in Wi-Fi. I'll look into the script. I know we can make modifications to support an external wireless adapter over USB, but I'll go ahead and just disconnect this and we'll look into installing this setup on Pi 4. We'll start with installing a fresh image onto the SD card for the Raspberry Pi 4. I'll use Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit. The SD card is in my MacBook. I'll go ahead and click right. We'll confirm that we're okay with deleting that information. I'll need to enter my password. And now it's writing the operating system to the SD card. The micro SD card is flashed. We'll put it into Pi 4. So this is a fresh install of the Raspberry Pi OS. And now we'll go ahead, connect everything and boot it up. I have Pi 4 powered up with external mouse, keyboard and monitor. Now, this will be the only time you really need this. After we do the setup script, you'll be able to connect directly, get your Mavlink data into QGround control, or if you need to SSH in, you can. I'll go through the basic configuration. We'll click Next. I'll just specify US, American English, Chicago time zone. Just set that to whatever your time zone is. We'll hit Next. We'll leave the default password for Pi which is Raspberry. We'll just keep that simple. Now we'll go ahead and do our network configuration. We'll need to have external network connectivity uh, so that we can pull the script from GitHub and then install the necessary modules. It'll ask to update software. I normally just click skip because we'll do a system update from the command line. Now I'll go ahead and select restart. After rebooting, I opened up Chromium and went to the Rad Mavlink Bridge GitHub page. I'll put a link to it below the video. You can check out the README that talks about uh, what you need to do, the models supported. Now, I encourage you guys to test it on whatever Pi version you're running. I'm going to also test it on Jetson Nano and a few other devices. But if you go through the README, You'll get to the bottom and see the steps necessary to be able to install the script. Before we actually do that, I want to just take you through the script real quick in case there's something you'd like to a tweak or just get a better understanding. So there's a lot going on. We install Python and Map Proxy, uh, some networking configuration tools. Now you can see here, as I de demonstrated before, there's this 192.168.4.1. That is the IP address of Pi. And then if you go down here to the DHCP range, there's 4.2 all the way to 4.20. You could change that range if you like. Make sure you know what you're doing. But Pi will support many different connections. The gateway IP, once again, is 4.1. If we get to this line 38 and below, our settings for the access point for the hotspot, so you can see here SSID RAD bridge and the password testing 123. You're certainly able to change that if you'd like. We do enable SSH so that you can, once connected to the hotspot, SSH in. And then this is an important piece that uh, starts Map Proxy on boot up. And there is a project called Map Gateway. I'll go over to this. This is part of the repo. You don't have to worry about it. The script actually downloads this and installs it, but a little shout out to Kevin Hester who put this together. This allows us to run map proxy as a daemon process so that when your Pi boots, this will initialize your map proxy gateway. Let me also mention in this process, there are these daemon arguments. And if you're connected via USB, generally that's gonna be dev 
TTY USB 0, we want 57600. This is the communication with our radio connected to Pi. That's going to send that information to 14550 on Raspberry Pi. That's the port we actually connect to with Q ground control, but it's certainly feasible that you could set up multiple ports. You could have another argument for 14551. What that would allow is more than one ground station to connect to Pi and receive information. So those are the highlights of the script. Let's go ahead and dive into actually running it. Near the bottom of the readme, there is this installation section. So I'm going to grab this first command. This is wget. This pulls the script from GitHub to our local machine. So let me fire up a terminal window. We'll use the default pi home directory. Click paste. And once again, make sure that you have a good internet connection that has been saved locally. We want to make this script executable so that we can run it. I'll go ahead and run the command to make it executable. The last and very important thing is make sure that you execute this as sudo so that you have permissions to install the necessary packages. So I'll just run sudo setup and this will take care of running the script and installing all the necessary dependencies. Now I've found that the script generally takes anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes to run and the last part of the script down at the very bottom you'll see that uh, there is this reboot command so what will happen is the install script will install all the dependencies the configuration files and then it will reboot pi now one thing that i do recommend is we get back to the auto start arguments it's looking for our radio connected via usb so that means if it reboots and it doesn't have the radio connected, then that's not going to work. You can ultimately just plug in your radio, power cycle Pi, and everything will be good. But another thing I recommend is this is happening. Just go ahead and plug in your radio, and when it reboots, everything will be up and running. The install script took about 10 minutes on Pi 4. You can see that this note says SSH is enabled. That's fine. Let's just do a quick check before we go to the bench. Now, I do not have the radio connected via USB, so we'll just see the MAB gateway service and its current status. So I'll do system CTL status MAB gateway. And you can see here it says active exited. That's because our radio is not connected, so I'll go ahead and just exit out of that. We'll shut down and we'll go over to the bench connect the radio and do a test with q ground control okay so i have pi 4 on the bench let me make a side comment as it relates to powering your raspberry pi if you're like me you'll want to do this in the field not just on the bench so uh, keep in mind you can use a esc with a bec built in or just a default bec this has a 5 volt output up to two amps that's sufficient for being able to power pi 3 i believe pi 4 might need up to two and a half amps but you can see here that i have a lipo power coming in i generally use a 3s and then on the other end i have wired up this little usb connector so i can power that pi 3 off of a lipo with that being said let me go ahead and power up pi 4 I have this nice little power supply with a switch. We'll go ahead and let that boot up. My telemetry radio is plugged in via USB. You can see power here. Let me go ahead and power up this test aircraft. We'll see the rad bridge hotspot being broadcasted. I'm gonna go to testing one, two, three. For the password that was in the configuration script once again you can change that to whatever you like this ipad will now be on the pi network and i'll go over to q ground control we'll look at our connection settings we set this up previously but let's take a look we have rad bridge port 14550 if you recall in the install script via udp that map proxy is sending data to 14550 on this pi and then the ip of pi is 192.168.41 
So we'll cancel that because I already have that set up. We'll click connect. Communication regained. So now we're downloading parameters. You see the little status LED. And now we have the full capabilities of Q ground control, or this could be mission planner, whatever your ground station of choice, anything that supports the Mavlink protocol. Now we have a nifty little Mavlink bridge that we can connect to, get telemetry, set it up to support multiple ground stations, whatever you wanna do. Definitely encourage you to look through the repository, download the script, give it a run, let me know what you think. I do want to end up running it on this Jetson Nano, see how that works. But as I've spent time on this, really trying to get the install dialed in, so far I've had success with Pi 3 and Pi 4. If you guys have any other devices that you test and it doesn't work with, please let me know. You can open an issue in GitHub. I hope to improve this over time. Just wanted to uh, share that update. Hope you guys find it helpful. Leave any questions or comments below. And until next time, thanks for watching.